Well, they're all here. I'm going to move on with the quotient rule. This is your practice um, worksheet to do. So I'm going to start with 21 here. Start with the numbers. The numbers cannot be reduced. Two, thir two over three cannot be reduced. So I'm just going to simply copy them over here. So those are gone. I go in this order. I just take from the top the next variable that shows up and I look to see if there's anything to combine it with on the top or bottom. In this case, I can see that I have an H2 on the bottom. So I have a negative 2, take away 2. So that is really a negative 4. So I have h to the negative 4. So make sure you're doing your subtraction right. Use Desmos if you have to, if you struggle with that. So j, I've got j2. I'm going to look to see if there's something on the bottom. And I do see that there's j, no exponent, so that means 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm going to leave my j, and I'm not going to put my exponent there because I know that if it doesn't have an exponent, it's 1. So my j's are done. There's no k up top, so I'm just going to bring my k3 over. Now I have to get rid of my negative exponents. So I'm going to copy my numbers, 2 thirds. Looking at my h negative 4, I know that the negative causes it to h to go to the bottom. Lose the negative sign, and I keep my exponent. My j remains up top, and my k remains on the bottom. So there you go. Pretty cool, huh? I love math. All right, anyway, moving on to 22. I wanted to do an even one with you because that 0. I wanted to make sure you get to see an example with that 0. So let's do this. So let's go on with the number 22. I'm start my fraction bar. Looking at my numbers, 4 thirds, I cannot reduce that anyway. So I'm going to keep the 4 thirds. X. Several ways you can do this. I'm just going to go ahead and mark it off because I know that it's 1, so it's not even there. So I have no X up top. Y. Is there? I'm looking at my Y now. All I did was copy my base, my Y. I'm looking to see if there's a Y on the bottom. There is not. So I'm just going to copy my Y over for right now. Then I look at my Z. I've got a negative 2 up here, and on the bottom I've got a negative 2. So I've got negative 2 minus a negative 2. And that is 0. So I have z to the 0. I'll get back to that in just a second. Then I look that I still have that x to the negative 4 on the bottom. So I'm bringing that down, or over, excuse me. Now let's get rid of our negatives. So I've got 4 thirds, that's not going to change. So I'm done with that, that right there. The x, I've got a negative 4. What does the negative cause it to do? Change position. So in this case, it's on the bottom, so it goes to the top. And if you should remember that from your notes. So if it changes position from denominator to numerator, I lose the negative, and I keep the exponent value. So that's done. Now I'm going to do my y y to the negative 2. It's up top to start with. The negative causes it to flip. Go to the bottom, lose the negative, and keep the exponent of 2. And then I've got z to the 0. And we know that anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So there's your answer right there. Hopefully that you followed that and you were good with that. So let me do a couple more of these. Or actually, yeah, two more of these. And then, um, I will let you practice these. Okay, so starting here, remember if I don't see a coefficient, I know that it's 1. I don't have to write that coefficient in, but if it helps me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that for my purposes. Alright, so now I've got an x as my base. I've got a negative 3 minus a 2, which is negative 5. So x to the negative 5. So my x's are done. Done, not done. So y, negative 3 minus 3. Negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. Did you want to say 0? Uh-uh, it's negative 6. Okay, so that's done. Now I have nothing else on the top, but I've got this on the bottom, which I need to bring over. So z3. Last step is to get rid of my negatives. So I'm going to leave my 1 up top for right now x to the negative fifth, bring my 4 over, the x goes to the bottom, lose a negative, keep the exponent. 
y to the negative 6, y goes to the bottom, lose the negative, keep the exponent. So I'm done on the top, so that 1 there can stay there. And then I'm going to bring my z3 over. So there's your answer for 25. And let me do one more, and then you can go ahead and practice. So if you're good, you don't need to watch one more. But I want to do one more. I'm seeing if there's any more harder ones. Uh, this is probably this is probably about what you'll see. So now I'm going to go ahead and start with my numbers. Remember, there's a one on the bottom, so I'm just going to bring my three. And I'm not even going to put the one on the bottom right now. So my numbers are done. I bring my base of a over a negative one. Take away one. Negative one minus one is negative 2. So a to the negative 2. A's are done. All right, you can do that on the side if it helps you if you don't want to do your calculator. But make sure you're doing your computations right, your subtractions right. Alright, now I'm going to bring my b. So this is done. So my b over, make my fraction bar a little bit longer. And I have a 3 take away a negative 4. So 3 take away a negative 4. So changing that, so I've got 7, so b7. So that's good. And then I'm going to bring over my C. I've got 2, take away 2. And so 2 plus a negative 2 is 0. And there's nothing on the bottom. Now if I had that one there, I could do it. But really, if you remember your fraction rules, anything over 1 is just the number. So I'm just going to go ahead and simplify a little bit more using that. So here we go. Oops, I'm trying to get a pen here. Sorry. Took me a second. All right, so now 3 stays the same. What does the negative cause it to do? You got it. Goes to the bottom, and you keep your exponent. B7 stays up top. And anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so there's your answer. So if you take these piece by piece while I'm showing you, or how I'm showing you, you should be good to go. Again, if you have any questions, let me know.